Welcome to McFly Angler. I've never been a guide, but I still enjoy teaching people how to catch more fish. So join me in this video where I show you how I tie this fly. To start this off, we need a dry fly hook. And I really like these risen barbless dry fly hooks. Today I'm tying size 16. Secure the hook in your vise. For thread, I like this Vivas 10 knot in brown because it's a flat thread and it's super strong for its thickness. Start your thread about halfway down the hook shank and break or trim off the tag end. Then bring your thread back to the bend of the hook. Next we're going to need some tail fibers from a grizzly and a brown rooster cape. Now I do suggest a rooster cape because you get such a wide variety of feathers. Sure, it's expensive for good ones, but they allow you to get the longer tail fibers or even tie streamers with the larger feathers towards the base and tie dry flies down to even the smallest sizes with the feathers by the top. But for now we need the bottom feathers which are easiest to access under the cape. Normally you would have to find feathers with matching fiber sizes from each color neck. Then place them together and hope they align properly which these do not. As you can see the brown is much longer than the grizzly. But here's the method that I use. Align the tips of some grizzly fibers like so and then grasp the tips with your other hand. Not straight on the front of your fingers though, like this. You really want to turn your fingers and grab them from the side like so. You want to pinch tight and pull straight back on the feather. Not this way towards the tip, but towards the rear. Then take the brown feather and align the tips. Then you can actually place them right on your fingers, where the tips will align with the grizzly tips. Then pull them off in the same way. Now just trim the end square since the fibers are different sizes and you're ready to tie the tail end. Measure out about a hook shank length and then make a pinch wrap to tie these in. Now, unfortunately I didn't have this reach all the way back. Oops. Also my fibers were rotating slightly, which is due to the angle at which I have to tie while filming. Sorry guys. I'm sure you'll do a lot better than this. Trim off the tag ends about halfway up the hook shank like so. And then clean up that section with thread wraps and then bring your thread back to the start of the tail. Then use your thumbnail to flare the tail out slightly like so. Now for dubbing, I like using this UV2 fine and dry dubbing in Adam's Gray. It's easy to use and will float really well, and you only need a small amount. Now last time I tied in Adam's, many people complained that I didn't use original dubbing which is muskrat. Yes, sure, there are some properties to muskrat which make it slightly better, but it is harder to find, and I like using the UV2 better. So that's what I'm using. Feel free to use whatever you like. Make a fine but tapered noodle onto your thread and then create a tapered body up to about two thirds the way up the hook. If you have too much dubbing, you can just pull it off and trim it like so. Now we need some post material, and there's a lot of it on the market. Some colored, some on a spool, all of it work. Today though, I'm just using the PolyPro yarn. Feel free to use what you like though. Pull off a small section like so, and cut it shorter lengths so it's easier to work with. Then wrap around the thread and place on top of the hook shank. Place your finger on the side of the hook shank to make sure it doesn't spin around the hook. Then make a couple of tight wraps to hold it in place. Then pull the post back and make some wraps in front, and also make some wraps behind it as well. Then pull the post upward and start making posting wraps up the material. Now this can be tricky if you haven't done it before, but it's all about how much tension you put on your thread. Just keep practicing and it will start to become easier. Tie a fair ways up the post, maybe about a hook gap, or slightly less. Then come back down and tie the post in tight with a few wraps in front and behind. Now my hook slipped in the vise, which is unfortunate, but luckily it didn't mess up my post. At this point I like cutting my post off to give me more room on the next steps. This should be roughly as long as the shank of the hook. Now we need size 16 hackle. However, many people say the benefit of tying parachute flies is it allows you to up the hackle size. This should give more buoyancy and be easier to find hackle that will fit a smaller fly. So here are grizzly and brown hackles in size 14. Let's give it a try with the larger hackle. To prepare the hackle, find where the stem is more flexible and strip off the fibers behind that. Also you want to strip off the hackle that is on the left a bit more, which is the opposite of traditional cat skill flies, at least for my technique in wrapping these. However, I messed up and I did it on the wrong side. More to that in a minute. Then align both hackles so the fibers start at the same spot. And then cut the tips off square. Now tie the hackles in on the side of the fly facing you. 
and then go under the hackle with your thread and pull the hackles upward as you tie up the post. Then bring your thread back down the post and onto the hook shank. Now dub on a little more of your dubbing and make alternating wraps in front of the post and behind it, building up a small thorax. Then in front of the post, bring your thread around the back of the post and then forward like so. Hold the thread with your pinky or ring finger and then grab your fly with your thumb and index finger. Adjust the angle of the fly to angling downward like so. Then pull the hackle down like so to create a small crease in the stem. As you can see the hackle was stripped off on the wrong side, but luckily this feather was cooperating still. Make 3-4 to four wraps with your hackle and then capture it with your thread. You want to bring your hackle on the opposite side of your thread and then pull it tight off towards the post. And bring your thread up around under the hackle like so. Then make a wrap with the thread over the hackle and then under and then over it once more before trimming off the waist close. Now for the same thing with the brown feather. However, this feather did not want to cooperate. As you can see, it wanted to twist, which would ensure that all the grizzly hackle would be matted down. This is because of the mess up with stripping off the fibers on the wrong side. So I stripped them off here, more on that side. And while it still had a little bit of a mind of its own, it finally worked properly, and I was able to palmer it on. Capture the brown hackle in the same way as the grizzly and trim off the excess feather. Now you can cut off any hackle fibers that have gotten trapped. Then simply whip finish the fly under your hackle and right on the parachute post. Bring your fly back to the normal position and then take a needle or bodkin and dip it in some cement. Then use the needle to wipe it onto your whip finish like so, on both sides and the front. And there we have it, the way I tie a parachute post. However, I will tell you I don't like tying them oversized like this. I do prefer to tie them the proper sized hackle like so. But you can see here how much larger the hackle is on the oversized one here. The correct size one extends back to about the start of the tail rather than almost to the end which I think looks much better, and I feel doesn't really change the buoyancy all that much. Well, as always, I listed all the materials in the description section of this video. Some of the materials, like these awesome hooks, came from a company called Risen, which offered all of my subscribers a discount. Type in McFly at checkout, and you will get an additional 15% off of their already amazing prices on gear, apparel, and materials. Well, thanks for watching. If you like this sort of thing, please subscribe. If you have already, then hit the like button. I will see you on the next video. Now you go catch some fish.